call and thank you guys for the opportunity to be here today and kind of share some of the great things that's happening in Pike County and, and to express uh, how excited I am and uh, how blessed I feel to be a part of ALL uh, with all the projects that you've heard today and just simply being around all these great people with all these great ideas. There's simply no way that you could be a part of something and not walk away with something new and something inspiring to do. And I just think it's so powerful that we come together and that we work together and there's not one of these people that I can't email, call, that are not just right there. Uh, the support is there, uh, it's unprecedented, uh, it's ready, you know, and it's going to change the way education is in our region. So I, I'm blessed to be a part of that and have those resources. Um, my capstone project is um, a lot of what you've heard today. It's about personalized learning. I have people like Jill Maynard in my district <laughs> that <laughs> I have to figure out a way to meet her needs. <laughs> And I have 17 other principals that are in our district. We have 18 schools, 12 are elementary, one true middle school, and we have five high schools. None of those folks are on the same page at the same time. And we have over a thousand uh, people that are staff members that we have to keep uh, up to date and provide them with the, the best possible professional learning opportunities to meet each and every need. So we're challenged by that. We're challenged by the fact that our schools are spread out across the district. We're divided into five basic areas, and most of the seven schools are almost an hour away from our central office. So my capstone project um, kind of goes along with what you've heard today, is trying to find innovative ways to provide quality professional learning opportunities to get consistency throughout our district, to get the message out while and allowing each of the schools to maintain their individuality and to meet their needs. Um, not an easy task because principals, as you know, are overworked. Uh, school teachers, you have too much to do besides attending the meeting. And so we have to get creative and find ways uh, to do what you need when you need it. Um, one of the things that we're doing at the district level, uh, we use OneDrive, uh, and we, at the principal's request for our back to school, uh, PDs instead of having to sit and get PD days where everybody walks away with a few forests and trees that we have killed. Uh, we actually do videos and have all of our information in OneDrive uh, so that the principals can access that, uh, get that information when they need it on their own time and in their own way. We are looking towards doing more of those types of PDs. Um, thanks to Jill <laughs> and the success of her uh, personalized professional learning that happened in that area, other areas in our district are now looking at that. So we're looking at that on a district level. So we're kind of growing and going in those directions. Um, we have several ideas um, that, that I want to implement through my capstone things, little principal things kind of uh, jump right in there, took a little bit of my time. But uh, uh, we want to try some of the area meetings, some of the face-to-face -face meetings, some online meetings and things to try to decide which one of those would work best and to provide a variety for all of the staff members so they can pick and choose. Um, the face-to-face -face training, sometimes training the trainer go back, we have found it's not being effective. And some of the key initiatives and the information that we need to get out there is not happening. So we have got to find a way that makes the most of the time and the resources we have and use quality instruction. So that's kind of where my capstone is going. But one of the greatest things that's happened through ADLL was I was actually in the room and I got $1,000 along with the learning design uh, to redesign a classroom. And I had the great privilege of passing that money on to a special lady who has just taken it. So I'm kind of bringing some high show and tell. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of coming out on my presentation today. So at this time, I would like to introduce to you Ms. Connell. Uh, she's from Mullins Elementary. She has taken $1,000 and done so much more with it than I ever could have. And I want her to share the many wonderful things that she's doing. Yes, so. two I'm so excited about what she's doing because she, she does so much. So excited about this and when I started looking at videos and probably things that Emily got all excited about posting, um, I did review all of those and I was thinking, oh, what can I do with a thousand dollars? Well, you know, first thing, furniture. I don't have enough for 26 kids, you know, and I looked at all kinds of different things. 
Well, a couple of things I've already implemented with what I already have. One thing is I know collaboration is very important for the 21st century classroom. Uh, my kids already, it's first grade, they already sit around tables. So I had the principal to uh, have the janitors come in and raise all my tables up. So now my kids have a choice when they come to do their work. Do they stand up and do their work or do they sit down because there are still chairs there and they're still reachable for them. And what I, what I really learned from the students about this, you know how we as teachers, we look at this kid who's just constantly fidgeting and we're saying they're ADHD, they won't sit still. They don't have to sit still. <laughs> it's okay to fidget. And the only time I ever worry about that is if they're not focusing. So if they are focusing, I'm great. And I, let me tell you, when we go back to the chairs and they get the choice, it's the ones who are always fidgeting are the ones who are standing up. So I love that. I absolutely love it. We've done this now for about two weeks. Uh, the second thing I did was uh, accessibility like for the smart board. The smart board up here in front of the classroom, classroom shapes like this, the kids in the back of the seat. They were, um, you know, I was having to bring them up and sit on a carpet in front of it, you know, and that got tiring. So, I had an extra projector where I'm the STLP coach. I had bought some two or three years ago, extra. And uh, I used my school instructional money. They gave me $200 every year I spent. So I used that to buy a mount for it. And so the district came in, ran the cables and everything, and I had a projector really big on the wall near the back of the room. So now the kids have the choice. Do I watch it here? Do I watch it there? Everybody sees it. They love it. And the great thing, and that really cost, I think it cost $120 to do that, plus the district did provide the cables and things. I didn't have to buy that. But what that gave was accessibility for all children to be able to see what I was doing with the smart board or what they're doing with the smart board, because I really like getting them as they're, you know, doing the smart board activities. And uh, so that's been very popular, but I had them make it really big. I think it's 70 by 70 back there. So. The kids that are, you know, all it took was where do I position that with the ceiling tiles. The kids that were watching the smart bird front, you know, because I'm a lucky kid in the front, everyone's watching the big one. So that's two things I did without the money. What I used the money for was that um, I do do a lot of projects. Uh, we do uh, coding, they learn coding, and things that they need to do collaboratively. So I found these tables that you can put the iPads in so the iPads aren't falling off on the floor and things. And they're they're face to face. They had them either like this or like this. Well, you know, I thought I've got five student workstations on a big long table. If I put them together like this, that's just the same thing. So I because I know last year when we were doing coding, they <coughs> sat together and worked out the coding problems. So I got the two of the tables and they're on wheels. You all were talking about they needed to, it'd be nice to have things on wheels. They're on wheels, they're face to face. The kids can gather around and work things together. So that's one of the things I've ordered. Haven't got it yet, but I'm anticipating great things out of it. The other thing is I let the kids kind of talk over with me what that they wanted to see in the classroom. And one of the things they wanted is I have a big area with a carpet in the back where they can go back. Sometimes during seniors, I don't do it every day, but they, believe me, they love it. They can just go back, get a buddy, sit down and read a book together, or read by themselves. Well, I'll have a piece of carpet there, and they wanted some chairs there so that they could sit and, and read collaboratively also. And I, I'm hoping that we will be doing some research also collaboratively when all that comes in. I love doing that activity as part of my center rotation. I haven't passed, I don't know if I overdid it or what, you know, where they weren't really engaged the way they're supposed to be. But this year, I love it. I can put those kids and say, okay, this is your center that you're going to do today, because I usually use a listening center. We're not going to do listening center today. You get to go back and choose a book and read, or read with a friend, or whatever. 100% engagement. I mean, they are reading, they're enjoying the books, and so I'm really anxious, and they are too. They're the ones wanting the furniture back there. 
So we actually kind of had some of the books spread around the room, you know, like the AR books were here and all that. The kids helped me. We moved everything back there into a common reading area. So that's what I did with the $1,000. And I'm very, very excited about the 21st century classroom and especially the standing tables. <laughs> and Mrs. Roberts is here. She teaches next door to me. She had hers, at, you know, raised up as well. And that's something, you know, they're all at certain levels. That's something it's that bad, okay. anybody can do. You don't want to, you don't have to fight. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to fidget. That's what I like. You're not saying, okay, sit still. You're moving around to do it at church. Why are you up? You're supposed to be sitting down. You don't have to do that. That's not your, an and not your anticipation. Thank you. I want to say thank you for everything. <laughs>